Hi everyone, you're watching Eagle News International Switzerland Edition. I'm John Kevin Gloser. These are interesting times. Today's headlines. World Food Programme helps battle Ebola in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The importance of having physical activity from a young age. Better than expected first quarter results for UBS. In lifestyle, Cape Town's Two Oceans Aquarium. The beautiful lakeside city of Montreux, Switzerland. How does music affect you? And in technology and sports, drones to provide medical supplies in Ghana. Games promoting unity in Scandinavia. Prevalence of Ebola in the Democratic Republic of Congo increases every day. And so do the intense efforts to fight back the deadly epidemic and prevent it from spreading. World Food Programme, or WFP, provides assistance not only through food contributions, but also through logistical support to medical response teams. Intense efforts to fight back the deadly epidemic of Ebola in the Democratic Republic of Congo DRC continue, as its 10th outbreak is not abating. According to World Food Programme, WFP, the recent number of cases has surpassed 1,300. More than 870 of them have died, and the number of new cases reported in Ebola hotspot continues to increase every day. Nine months into the response, the epidemic is still contained within the provinces of Ituri and North Kivu. There is, however, a high risk of it spreading to large cities such as Goma and even neighboring countries. One way to contain the disease and prevent its spread is to trace people who might have contracted the virus and limit their movements. The reason why WFP is distributing weekly food parcels to people suspected of carrying Ebola is so they won't need to leave their homes to buy food whilst under medical observation. The idea is that the more suspected cases stay in one place, the less likely the virus will spread. Since August 2018, WFP has assisted 264,000 people by providing 3,300 tons of food and nutrition assistance as part of an integrated, government-led response strategy. WFP has been assisting hundreds of thousands of people displaced by armed conflict in the province. In Beni territory, the epicenter of the Ebola outbreak, 12,000 displaced people received monthly food rations from WFP. WFP is also providing food to inpatients and caregivers in hospitals located in towns of Mangina and Beni. Some 4,000 people are receiving a one-month supply of cereals, beans, oil, and salt. With the epidemic not likely to face down soon, the pressure is on to win the race against time and to save lives. According to WFP's DRC Country Director, Claude Gibidar, with its food assistance, logistics and air support already firmly in place, WFP is committed to do even more to save lives and to prevent the epidemic from spreading. For Eco News International Switzerland Edition, I'm Ace Chumiko, 1 with 25. The habits from a young age. The World Health Organization issues guidelines to better care for today's youth and future generations. Less time spent on screen-based activities, reduced period of time on prams and seats, better quality of sleep, and more playful activities. These are the recommendations of the World Health Organization, or WHO, for young children for a healthier development. As we do on older children and adults. Young children start off being very active, but the way our lifestyles are now shaped by use of the car, by use of electronic uh, equipment, by the ways in which we recreate, children are spending less time moving. That means they're not getting the physical and motor skill development, not getting the energy expenditure, not enjoying play with friends, family, parents, and all of those are important components of healthy lifestyle. So we've focused the effort to develop guidelines to guide parents, caregivers, kindergartens, childcare centres on what's the best environments and ways in which to promote physical activity in this age group.
the guideline tackles physical activity, sedentary behavior and sleep of children under 5 years of age. The experts assessed the effects of inadequate amount of sleep and physical activity and reviewed evidence around the benefits of increased activity levels. Currently, over 23% of adults and 80% of adolescents are not sufficiently physically active. It is best if healthy physical activity, less sedentary behavior and good sleeping habits are established early in life to better shape habits from childhood through adolescence and into adulthood. Applying the recommendations in these guidelines during the first five years of life are said to contribute to children's motor and cognitive development and lifelong health. UBS performs better than what analysts expected. First quarter results higher than forecast. UBS, one of Switzerland's banking giant, defies the odds when its first quarter turned out better than what some analysts had predicted. Mr. Ermotti, UBS's CEO, described this year's first quarter as one of the worst in recent history. According to UBS, revenue and profits both slid in the first quarter when a chill ran through the global economy and markets. Investment banking revenues declined by 27% from last year, while revenues in global wealth management decreased by about 9%. In addition, Pre-tax profits at the investment banking unit tumbled by 64% to 207 million US dollars due to less revenue from advising clients on mergers and acquisitions as well as from equities. However, its net income for the first quarter came in at 1.1 billion US dollars and revenues contracted by 12% to 7.2 billion. While lower than last year's results, both figures exceeded the consensus of analysts surveyed by the Swiss financial news agency AWP, which was a net profit of 873 million on revenues of 6.9 billion. Although the first quarter of 2019 was characterized by challenging market conditions, according to Mr. Ermotti in a statement, he added that the market conditions improved at the end of the quarter and into April. From EBC International Switzerland Edition, I'm Ace Jumiko, 1 with 25. Those were today's top news stories. Please stay tuned for our lifestyle technology and sports programs. Welcome to Lifestyle with stories on what to see, learn and experience in continental Europe and Africa. Ever wondered what treasures two different oceans hold? Here's our Africa Bureau reporting from the Two Oceans Aquarium in Cape Town, South Africa. Hello everyone, I'm Kanye Deise from Cape Town, South Africa. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to have species from two different oceans? Well, we have the answers for you. Today, I'm standing in front of the Two Oceans Aquarium in Cape Town. Let's see what it's all about. The Two Oceans Aquarium was first opened in November 1995 and has since been one of Cape Town's most visited destinations. Do you see all these species? This aquarium gives you the opportunity to explore the vibrant and colorful scenery of both the Atlantic and Indian Ocean without having to get wet. The Two Oceans Aquarium is anchored at the Victorian Offord waterfront in Cape Town. Likewise, it is also named after its location, where the Indian and Atlantic Ocean meet. The aquarium is ideally positioned to showcase the incredible diversity of marine life found in these two oceans. This award-winning aquarium boasts its breathtaking exhibits. At present, the aquarium is comprised of seven exhibition galleries with large viewing windows. Amazing, right? From small species like the Nysna sea horses and shoals of shimmering fish to larger predatorial species like the ragtooth shark, the aquarium holds astonishing discoveries around every corner. Take the opportunity to come face to face with giant spider crabs and have an adventurous experience at the touch pool. You wouldn't want to miss that. 
Are you looking for something unique to do? Try diving with the sharks in the predator exhibit area. And if you want to meet the fastest bird in the water, get up and close to the penguin exhibit. Want to enjoy activities for the whole family? The touch pools and microscope exhibits are exciting for kids of all ages. The Two Oceans Aquarium is one of the preferred family destinations in Cape Town to discover water species together to have fun and make remarkable memories. Reporting from the Two Oceans Aquarium in Cape Town, I'm Fanya Jayse and I'm one with 25. Are you a fan of walks by the lake and surrounded by a beautiful scenery? Here's the Yardin Baisa. Mundo is known as the capital of the Bode Riviera. It boasts breathtaking views of the Swiss Alps and Lake Geneva and a relaxed and comfortable atmosphere. Taking a walk by the lake is quite awesome. During the spring season, you can also enjoy flower displays in every corner. Why not also get a glimpse of the Freddie Mercury statue, singer of the rock band Queen, who settled down here. If you continue your walk by the lake, you can reach the Chateau du Chillon. Over centuries, the castle was home to the Counts of Savoy and has had many famous visitors, such as English poet Lord Byron. Check it out because it's worth a visit. Montreux is also home to a great jazz festival, a summer favorite for many. End your tour, ride a boat to even more enjoy the stunning views or reach other lakeside villages. Montro, put it on your list. I am Chaudelaine Baisa, EBC correspondent from the Stad Switzerland, and I am one with 25. Do you like to listen to music and want to know more about how it moves you? Here's the Valley Wanag reporting from my Italy Bureau. Music makes me fuel. La musica riesce ad esprimere le mie emozioni. Music is my company. Music relaxes my mind. Music is considered to be one of the best ways to enter a mind-wandering mode, which was discovered by neurologist Marcus Rachel in 2001. This is the state the brain enters into most easily and music is one of the most effective ways of allowing you to enter this mode. Music fuels the mind and thus it fuels our creativity. A creative mind allows to make great discoveries and innovations. and mental well-being.
will be in true art life. From Milan, Italy, I am Nobel Wanek and I am on with 25. There you go for today's lifestyle stories from continental Europe and Africa. I am Jamie Di Umadi and I am one with 25. Next, technology and sports. Hi, I'm Carl Benedicto for Technology and Sports News. High-tech devices to reach out to Ghana is needy. Drones are being used to deliver medical supplies. Shortly after for sports, games that unite and foster friendship in the Scandinavian region. Zipline, a startup and UAV, unmanned aerial vehicle, manufacturer and logistics services provider, has launched a new drone program in Ghana for medical purposes. This UAV program is a big help to hospitals that can provide medical supplies to people, especially in an urgent situation. So with the zip line and its provision of the drone technology, we believe very much that if it happens that we have to bring uh, things on an emergency basis, it's going to be much easier for us. That's why Ghana's government decided to launch the world's largest drone delivery service in the country. For this, they send drones to hospitals that will drop in time the packages with life-saving medicines, like blood, in order to decrease the amount of death due to a lack of medicines. Can you guess where we are? Do you know what country that flag is? If you say Sweden, then you're most definitely right. We're driving around Gothenburg, Sweden, and we'll let you know why. We are now here today at the Landala Gothenburg, Sweden, to witness a sport gathering of the members of the Church of Christ or Iglesia Ni Cristo. A project called Unity Games was launched by the Church Administration of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, which aims to develop friendly competition and promote active healthy lifestyle. The event was attended by many members across the Scandinavian region, which was represented by Sweden, Denmark, Norway, and Finland. From basketball, volleyball, badminton, table tennis, chess, and of course, the kids got their own game too. Boys enjoyed playing football. The girls got the same energy for playing football too. Kami po ay uh, nagpapasalamat sa tagapamahal ng pangkalahatan, ang kapatid na Eduardo B. Manalo, sapagkat naglulunsad sila ng ganitong mga aktividad, sapagkat ang nais nila, hindi lang matibay, malakas ang pananampalataya ng mga kapatid, kundi malakas at matibay din ang pangangatawan ng mga kapatid sa loob ng Iglesia ni Cristo. Ang totoo, ang ganito pong mga aktividad ay uh, nakapagbibigay ng kasiyahan sa mga kapatid. Have we mentioned the halftime? Scandinavian Unity Games delegates and attendees enjoyed the dance number prepared by the youth from Norway. First in history, this event, especially to the members of the Church of Christ and to all the players who participated in different games, win or lose doesn't matter so long as you took part in it. Once again, the Iglesia Ni Cristo members in this part of the world have proven their consistency in upholding unity with the church administration. So everyone is a winner in today's event. That's it for today's technology and sports news from continental Europe and Africa. I'm Carl Benedicto and I'm one with 25. That is today's Eagle News International Switzerland edition. Thank you for watching and join us again next time as we bring news that matters to you.